isn't she a cutie? And I am going to correct what I said in December when I said I found her. This is my Aurora 2.0. I lost the first one. I got it all wrong with transitioning from organic to LECA and self-watering. So I bought her because I saw similar attributes on the leaves, but she had no fragrance when I bought her, but now she has a fragrance. So she has graduated to being Aurora 2.0. And now I have two very similar little mini fowls, but the other one that we're going to be addressing today, Aurora 3.0 is Peloric. So I do have a little bit of variation, but I have all the fragrance, which is great. I'm very surprised. Fragrant. So that's taken care of that. I have Aurora 2.0 and Aurora 3.0. I've clarified that. Now we can get to business. I bought Aurora 3.0 in December of 20. And the only sign of active growth I have right now is this beautiful leaf coming out. I don't see any roots at the base of the orchid. There might be, if I'm really stretching my imagination, a root tip starting here. But you see, I have tidied her over and the mushrooms keep growing. I don't want to keep at it with the hydrogen peroxide. And my temperatures are now absolutely viable day and night that I'm quite okay with transitioning her now, despite not having active roots. And she needs a good cleanup, so let's get right into it. I don't think there will be any, any issues whatsoever with her transition. Touch wood, because just because I have a 2.0 now that is fragrant, doesn't mean I want to lose this one. I've quite come to like her little peloric attributes on her blooms and I've waited long enough for signs of root growth. But if there is a leaf growing, then roots will follow shortly. Let me just show you this little plug in here. <clears throat> yeah, we can just yank it off in this case. Yep. That was very nice. That was a pleasure to do. I'm always questioning these plugs. Now we've got lots of dry roots. I don't want to, at this point, remove the entire flower spike. I might use it as anchoring for the orchid once she's in the pot. But let's have a look-see. Lots of dead roots, very papery, dried out. While I've been taking care of her, I've been giving her a lot of calcium and magnesium. The occasional soak of seaweed didn't do much for this one. It's not like it said, yay, I've got all the goodness of seaweed. Mm -mm. No reaction at all. Let me use this flower spike as a holding point. And first of all, we'll take care of the obvious and then let's discuss what I'm going to be doing with the less obvious. Because I have quite a lot of burn on the roots that were on the surface of the pot, but they are okay in the pot. So we'll have a look at those once I get some of the obvious out of the way. Ideally, I want to be able to take as much bark off in this case as I possibly can. Because this one is holding on to a lot of bark. Which I don't like. I don't mind the occasional piece of bark. Doesn't bother me at all. She's going into inorganic media. Not a problem, but not this much. So we'll be just teasing a little bit with the good old fingernails. Tease, twizzle, jiggle, all that good stuff. She's looking very poorly, but her beautiful leaf growth is not looking stunted at all. And that gives me hope. And with the temperatures the way they are right now, I'm sure that she will start roots very, very soon. 
Let's have a look-see at this nonsense going on up here. All this, see how, gives me the feeling that she was actually watered with ice cubes before she arrived into my collection. This is a typical sign of ice cold water being poured through the top, killing the velamen. If this is what you see in the shop, a store, chances are they've used ice cold water, not room temperature water, or they've just plonked ice cubes onto the orchid. This is a very, very classic sign. And that is why you do not water with ice cubes. That is why no one would recommend putting that on an orchid. This is the result. It can happen instantly or it can happen over a long period of time. But all the roots that are in the pot that are viable have a problem right up here. The thing is that if I chop all of that off, I'm not going to have any roots in the pot. So I am not chopping it off. I'm going to see if I can get them into the lecker and hopefully at least sustain the orchid until such a time that she grows new roots and then we can revisit the pot in six months. No, not in six months because that would be the dead of winter. We can revisit the pot in a year and check out and see if there's anything that needs to be taken out, cut out because of these dying back based on their condition right up here. I'll give her a good, good cleanup. But if she was really suffering, you would see kinks in this leaf. You wouldn't see it growing so beautifully and extended. It could be that now this repot is going to put a kink right where she is at this point because she has to readjust with the new media. It may happen, it may not. We're just gonna go with what we see now and then in a couple of months, we'll have a look-see and see if she's grown a kink. And if she has, that is also a good indicator. She's not quite happy in the pot with her root system. By which time, once again, I hope new roots are already growing at the base. Right, let me spray her down as best as I can. And I think that would be pretty much it. There's another somewhat papery dead one right here. Let's take care of that. So we took off quite a bit, but that's only one. And sadly, I didn't check 100%. Sadly, it's the one that showed a sign of a growing tip. That's a shame. That could have been avoided. Here we are. Let's not do that again. Let's be super careful and just make sure that we maintain what we've got. Taking it down to the green when they're papery like this, best practice, it's fine. All the little black tips at the end, except that one I'm gonna show you. They're black and deteriorated then we can take them off. But this little one here, we're not taking off. Because it looks like it wants to do something out of that tip. So that's, we're going to leave that on. And that's all there really is to it. Despite the fact that these Roots right here are burnt, clear signs of cold damage. We're going to leave them on, leave that vellum in as is. There's an attempt at branching. We're going to take advantage of that. And let's hope that she will like the leka and say, oh, I feel so much better now. And this is where I'm going to stay, going to grow, I'm going to thrive. And then we see those cute little blooms again next year. One last example before I pot her up. I'm not peeling back this old velamen as I did with this one. This one is so woody and so attached. I'm going to do damage. 
So I'm just gonna leave that as it is and not do what I did here. I have myself a 15 centimeter pot and I'm thinking that should be fine. And it is, it's perfect. I already put a stake in there in case I want to use that as a support. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do using the old flower spike to tie her up. The only reason I'm tying her up is because there's a lot of flushing going to happen between now and until she is established in the pot. I'm going to think positively. And for that reason, she is going to be positioned a little bit more upright. And that's why I have the stake. Once she's established and wants to start leaning out, I will let her do that. Right, let's get rid of this microfiber because I am using 15 centimeter pot, one microfiber, but small leka. So I'm gonna increase the humidity and the water retention around the roots because I find that mini fowls are quite thirsty. And she's not exactly a true, true mini, but she is not one of the big ones. She's not medium sized either. And that is why I'm going to start using the small lecker for her, especially now as it's getting very hot, very dry, and I want as much humidity around her as possible. I also would like to have her a little bit deeper in the pot. There's one root that is holding me back. Let me put you in a different position so that we can have a better look-see together. Right. There's this one stubborn root that is rather long. It's already touching the bottom and that is holding me back a little bit. So let's identify the offensive root. And of course it's got a green tip on it, so we're not going to chop it back because I was just about to chop it back. It is so straight that twisting the pot wouldn't do any good whatsoever. So there's still some more resistance down here. So what I'm going to do is twist the root system in my hand, sort of poking away at them while they're in the pot and then with that twisted form, now I can lower her in the pot. With much better control as to the root tips. Woohoo! That's what this is all about. So if you find that you don't have a chance because of the thick, chunky root structure, to put the orchid into the pot and then twist the pot as you place her in, take the root ball out and use your hand to create the ball and then place the orchid back into the pot and it should all be just fine. And that's gonna work with my tie back here. And now we just need to fill her up with water. Let's have a final look-see how this is doing. Do we like the position? Do we like the height? I like the height. It's a little bit off center to the pot than I would have preferred, but that's okay. Roots come first. That's where they want to be. That's where they should be. How about back here? Ah, yes. You see that string of root that is sticking into the pot where I took the vellum off? We need to cover that with some lecker. Even though it is dried out, that piece has not been exposed to the elements, even though the vellum around it was dried off. So we need to keep that in an climate kind of situation that it remembers so that the bottom part of the root doesn't dry off. I know this doesn't sound like it makes sense, but it's true. The vellum is an outer protection cover like a sponge that is actually protecting the root itself from drying out. So my guess here is that I'm doing exactly what Velleman would do by covering it up with Lekka so that it doesn't dry out. Eventually it will dry out. 
That is the norm, but we can keep it intact for as long as possible. And then when the new roots grow, I will be removing Leca from the surface to let the roots dive in to the pot before I cover Leca over them. So right now, the height of the Leca is there for the added humidity around the base, especially these warm days, months coming up. And then once I see root nubbins coming, all this Leca will be moved to the side bit by bit. And once the roots are long enough, we cover it up again, and then we have roots in the pot. <laughs> My next thing is, do I need to tie her up? And I think it would make sense to do so, just for that extra little bit of stability. This way, she won't push herself out of the pot by the weight of the new leaf. We're still okay temperature-wise with the leaf. Snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> Very happy to get her cleaned up now. I'm gonna put some calcium magnesium in here. It's about 60 parts per million. She's had plenty, but seeing as I did not use any hydrogen peroxide, as you noticed, I've had this orchid now for so long, never seen any snails. I used a lot of hydrogen peroxide in the past to contain any mushroom buildup that is getting too much, any fungal issues, any mold. So she's fine. I don't have to worry about having used hydrogen peroxide in this repot. So calcium magnesium helps a little bit with possibly the transfer issue, give her a little bit of strength. That leaf is warming up. Let's put her in the shade. And let's clean up. There we go. <laughs> oh, so happy she turned out fragrant. Very, very pleased. Cute little blooms. She's been open now about two weeks. So we have 2.0 and 3.0. Thank you ever so much for watching. If I haven't covered something that you thought, well, why didn't she mention X, Y, Z? Please bring that to my attention in the comments below. This was a very chill little repot for a gorgeous little mini fowl. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Appreciate your time and your company. Stay safe. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.